Hello, fellow crafters. Welcome to Home Buddy. My name's Avery, and I don't like kombucha. I mean, it's not like I haven't tried to like it. I mean, on paper, it sounds great. Iced tea, home fermentation, bubbles. But in practice, it's a bit too strong and a bit too sweet. Like a home fermented kick to the face. So when I first heard about Jun, a type of fermented beverage made from green tea and honey, and dubbed the champagne of kombucha by kombucha authorities due to its lighter and sweeter taste, I was intrigued. Could this be the fermented beverage I'd been looking for? For my source, I'm using the book Fermented Probiotic Drinks at Home by Felicity Evans, which has a whole chapter on brewing different Jun varieties. I made my first attempt off camera, which was probably a good thing, as in true ADD fashion, I left my Jun to ferment with the SCOBY for way longer than I should have. And well, it smells very strong and kind of honey, but also very vinegary, kind of funky. <laughs> It's not the worst thing I've ever made. It smells worse than it tastes. But it's not good. So uh, hopefully our second batch will be a little better. The recipe I'm using makes enough jun to fill one one liter bottle, but I'm quadrupling the recipe because I want to experiment with different flavor add-ons. I'll begin by bringing eight cups of filtered water to a low simmer. While that heats, I take 16 tea bags of organic green tea and twist them all together. Once my water comes to a simmer, I turn off my stove and allow the tea to steep for no more than 60 seconds. Then I poured my newly steeped tea into a large heat-proof glass jar, added one cup of organic raw honey, I lost the footage of this so this is just a little reenactment, and topped it all off with another 8 cups filtered water. Give everything a stir, and then leave it alone for at least an hour or until the liquid has cooled to room temperature, at which point you can add your SCOBY. SCOBY is the general term for symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, and it does all the heavy lifting in the fermentation process. I bought mine on Amazon and it came with a bag of starter liquid, which is essentially just tea that has already been through the primary fermentation process. Once my brew is suitably lukewarm, I can add in my SCOBY along with one cup of starter liquid. Then I throw a cheesecloth over the top of the jar, Secure it with a rubber band, and label it so I don't forget what day I started. Then I place it in a shady spot outside, and leave the SCOBY to work its magic. This initial primary fermentation process can take anywhere from 4 to 10 days depending on the outside temperature, so I recommend you begin tasting it every day starting on day 4 to make sure you don't overbrew it like I did. <laughs> you will know your Jun is ready to bottle when you can see bubbling around the top and the taste has turned from saturin to slightly acidic with a distinct yeasty smell. I made this batch at the tail end of August, so it only took about 5 days before it was ready. Now that primary fermentation has been achieved, I can strain my Jun into 4 flip top bottles, reserving a bit of the liquid along with the SCOBY for my next brewing project. I left one bottle plain as the control group. To my second bottle, I added a quarter cup of raspberry puree, and I flavored my last two bottles with a quarter cup passion fruit and pear juice, and about two inches of raw ginger, respectively. I left the bottles in my pantry to fully carbonate, and made sure to burp each of the bottles daily to release excess gas that builds up during carbonation. According to Evans, this process can take anywhere from two to seven days, but I only needed two before my jun was fizzing properly. My jun could then be stored in the fridge to heavily impede the fermentation process. And with that, my jun was ready to drink. Which brings us to here and now, when we are at last able to taste the fruits of my labors. Since jun is considered the champagne of kombucha, I see no reason not to do this in style. Let's start with the regular jun. This one has no additives whatsoever. I'm going to use a strainer for this, just to make sure I don't get any... That's better. Alright, it smells like honey and yeast, which is pretty by the book. It's very tangy, almost like a lemonade. But it's quite nice. And it's a little fizzy, but it's not super fizzy. Definitely not like the full bubbliness of a kombucha, but little bits of fizz in your mouth. It's quite good, honestly. Up next, we have this lovely ginger jun, 
vintage bottled back in September. This one's definitely a little more bubbly and you can even see the bubbles on top of the glass. I definitely noticed when I was burping this bottle that there was a lot more excess carbonation. And I can only assume that that was due to the added on ginger. I know that you can also make ginger beer, so I think it just, it was like adding an extra fermentation product to it. This one kind of smells like warm apple cider, which is surprising because there's no apples in it. And that's quite good. It's like a less cloying ginger beer with a little bit more of a citrusy aftertaste. Maybe even similar to like a sparkling apple cider. And that's good. And now the passion pear gem. It smells very passion fruity. I think this will be a little bit sweeter than the ginger one we just had. But I think the passion fruit tanginess will pair well with the overall gem taste. Mm. It's a very slight passion fruit flavor. Again, not very sweet. A little bit of like kind of kick at the end that kind of gives you that passion fruit taste. You maybe get some of the pear, but mostly the pear you can smell. Definitely more bubbly. So if you want more bubbles, I recommend adding in some sort of like sugary juice. Tastes like one of those adult sodas. And finally, last but not least, is the jun that includes raspberry puree. I am gonna use a strainer to pour this into the glass because I don't want any raspberry seeds as I'm tasting. And oh my God, you can see it in the bottle, but it is such a beautiful color. I mean, that's festive. That's pretty freaking festive. Definitely smells like raspberries. That's the overriding kind of note I'm getting. It's a little funky in the aftertaste, but it's not anything that would kind of turn me off of it the way it sometimes does with kombucha, where it's so strong of a funky aftertaste. I think I like the passion fruit a little bit more than the raspberry, just because I think it's a little more sweet, but I definitely wouldn't say no to this. Pour it over rice on a hot summer day. That would be pretty good. After a short deliberation, I decided on these rankings for the different Jun flavors. As you can see, the basic Jun is ranked fourth, not because it was bad, but just because I thought the other flavors brought a little more to the table. In contrast, the ginger Jun was so enjoyable, it made me want to try brewing my own ginger beer. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. Thanks so much for watching and following along as I went on my little home brewing adventure. I hope you enjoyed it at least a little. And if you liked this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe and hit the bell icon for even more crafty content. Until next time, goodbye.